Welcome one and all to our weekly Thursday Vesper service. Today, in the wake of the inauguration of President Joe Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris. Please know that if you have any tech problems tonight with Zoom, you should be able to message our tech host in the chat box, which you can find by clicking the little icon that looks like a speech bubble. You are all muted and will remain so, but you should be able to see and hear me and any of the music and readings we're sharing tonight. If we have persistent tech problems, let's agree to take any lag time and accidents as space for grace and meditation. We will do our best, offer what we can, and do better next time. Vespers is one of the traditional monastic prayers of the hours, daily prayers that start with matins around 2 a.m. and end with compline just before bedtime. Vespers is the evening prayer at sunset, a time for reflecting with gratitude on the day and unwinding into a more contemplative mindset. During this time of physical distancing, we're gathering every Thursday at 5.30 with rotating leadership from myself, Jenna Crawford, Helen Lane, and Rebecca keller Scholl. Please be sure to make the space around you comfortable for participating in a time of contemplation, however that will work for you. Dimming the lights, being seated, standing or lying down, even turning off your Zoom camera. Let us settle in with some centering music from our own First Parish Singers. We shall be known by the company we keep, by the ones who circle round to tend these fires. We shall be known by the ones who sow and reap the seeds of change alive from deep within the earth. It is time now, it is time now that we thrive. It is time we lead ourselves into the west. great turning we shall learn to lead in love in this great turning we shall learn to lead in love we shall be known by the company we keep by the ones who circle round to tend these fires. We shall be known by the ones who sow and reap the seeds of change alive from deep within the earth. It is time now, it is time now that we thrive, it is time we ourselves into the well. It is time now, and what a time to be alive. In this great turning we shall learn to lead in love. In this great turning we shall learn to lead in love. In this great turning, we shall learn to lead in love. In this great turning, we shall learn to lead in love. We light our chalice, symbol of our faith, with these words adapted from 19th century Euro-American queer poet, Walt Whitman. This is for you, O oh democracy. Come, I will make the continent indissoluble. I will make the most splendid place the sun ever shone upon. I will make divine magnetic lands with the love of comrades, with the lifelong love of comrades. I will plant companionship thick as trees along all the rivers of America. 
and along the shores of the Great Lakes and all over the prairies, I will make inseparable cities with their arms about each other's necks by the love of comrades. For you, these from me, O oh democracy, to serve you. For you, for you, I am trilling these songs. Let us now light candles to represent the joys and sorrows present in the quiet among us today. Together, let's take a deep breath in and let it out. And as you continue to deep breathe deeply, please bring into your hearts any sorrows and joys you are carrying with you this week as we hold this space for our community and for the world. First, a candle for joys. May we welcome and attend to them whenever and however they arrive, a buoy against despair in challenging times. A candle for sorrows. May we know that even during this time of physical distancing, our spiritual community is with us through any trial. and a candle for the world. May accountability, equity, and justice lead to unity and peace the world over. And now let us take a quiet moment together with the ringing of the singing bowl to reflect on the joys and sorrows in our own lives and in the world. Our reading tonight comes from the first ever National Youth Poet Laureate, Black American poet and activist, Amanda Gorman. This is the recording of her poem, The Hill We Climb, which she offered at the inauguration yesterday. Mr. President, Dr. Biden, Madam Vice President, Mr. Emhoff, Americans, and the world. When day comes, we ask ourselves, where can we find light in this never-ending shade? The loss we carry, a sea we must wade. We've braved the belly of the beast. We've learned that quiet isn't always peace, and the norms and notions of what just is isn't always just is. And yet the dawn is ours before we knew it. Somehow we do it. Somehow we've weathered and witnessed a nation that isn't broken, but simply unfinished. We, the successors of a country and a time where a skinny black girl descended from slaves and raised by a single mother can dream of becoming president only to find herself reciting for one. And yes, we are far from polished, far from pristine, but that doesn't mean we are striving to form a union that is perfect. We are striving to forge our union with purpose, to compose a country committed to all cultures, colors, characters, and conditions of man. And so we lift our gaze not to what stands between us, but what stands before us, 
We close the divide because we know to put our future first. We must first put our differences aside. We lay down our arms so we can reach out our arms to one another. We seek harm to none and harmony for all. Let the globe, if nothing else, say this is true. That even as we grieved, we grew. That even as we hurt, we hoped. That even as we tired, we tried. That we'll forever be tied together, victorious. Not because we will never again know defeat, but because we will never again sow division. Scripture tells us to envision that everyone shall sit under their own vine and fig tree, and no one shall make them afraid. If we're to live up to our own time, then victory won't lie in the blade, but in all the bridges we've made. That is the promised glade, the hill we climb, if only we dare it. Because being American is more than a pride we inherit. It's the past we step into and how we repair it. We've seen a force that would shatter our nation rather than share it would destroy our country if it meant delaying democracy. And this effort very nearly succeeded. But while democracy can be periodically delayed, it can never be permanently defeated. In this truth, in this faith we trust, for while we have our eyes on the future, history has its eyes on us. This is the era of just redemption. We feared it at its inception. We did not feel prepared to be the heirs of such a terrifying hour, but within it we found the power to author a new chapter, to offer hope and laughter to ourselves. So while once we asked, how could we possibly prevail over catastrophe? Now we assert. How could catastrophe possibly prevail over us? We will not march back to what was, but move to what shall be, a country that is bruised but whole, benevolent but bold, fierce and free. We will not be turned around or interrupted by intimidation because we know our inaction and inertia will be the inheritance of the next generation. Our blunders become their burdens. But one thing is certain. If we merge mercy with might and might with right, then love becomes our legacy and change our children's birthright. So let us leave behind a country better than the one we were left with every breath from my bronze pounded chest. We will raise this wounded world into a wondrous one. We will rise from the gold limbed hills of the West. We will rise from the wind swept Northeast where our forefathers first realized revolution. We will rise from the lake rimmed cities of the Midwestern states. We will rise from the sun baked South. We will rebuild reconcile and recover in every known nook of our nation, in every corner called our country, our people diverse and beautiful will emerge battered and beautiful. When day comes, we step out of the shade of flame and unafraid the new dawn blooms as we free it. For there is always light, if only we're brave enough to see it, if only we're brave enough to be it. Tonight, we'll take just a few minutes to be inspired by the Christian practice of Lectio Divina, also known as sacred reading. Instead of meditating on a passage of scripture, we'll meditate on some of the words of the modern poet and prophet we just heard, Amanda Gorman. The Lectio Divina happens in four stages. First, Lectio, a careful and close reading of a passage. Second, meditatio, resting with a certain word or phrase that you feel drawn to. Third, oratio, dialoguing with God with your deepest self. And fourth, con contemplatio, resting again in quiet, waiting for an inspiration or answer from God or from your deepest self. 
let us begin with Lectio. We'll share Amanda Gorman's text from a rough transcript I found yesterday. We'll share that on the screen and I'll read it aloud once and then I'll read it to myself silently as you do the same. If one thing, one thing is certain, if we merge mercy with might and might with right, then love becomes our legacy and will change our children's birthright. So let us leave behind a country better than one we were left with. Every breath from my bronze pounded chest, we will raise this wounded world into a wondrous one. We will rise from the gold-limbed hills of the west. We will rise from the windswept wind northeast where our forefathers first realized revolution. We will rise from the lake rim cities of the Midwestern states. We will rise from the sun-baked south. We will rebuild, reconcile, and recover in every known nook of our nation and every corner called our country. Our people, diverse and beautiful, will emerge battered and beautiful. When day comes, we step out of the shade aflame and unafraid. The new dawn blooms as we free it. For there is always light, if only we're brave enough to see it, if only we're brave enough to be it. Now we pause with the meditatio. Was there a word or a phrase that seemed to leap out to you? Take that phrase or word into your heart, repeating it again and again during another time of quiet. And now we move into Oratio, a time of dialogue and prayer. Direct a question or a thought inward to your deepest self or outward toward God or the gods, however a prayer would be most generative to you, a prayer inspired by the words you've been meditating on.
And finally, we come to contemplatio. We take a second rest with Amanda Gorman's words and the prayer in our hearts, awaiting a feeling, an inspiration, an answer to our wonderings. Thank you for participating in this spiritual practice tonight. I hope you have some beautiful words, phrases, wonderings, and inspiration to take with you. Now let us listen to some music before we close. <laughs> These challenging times we are living through demand that we slow down, rest, and take special care of ourselves as we remain mindful of our essential interconnectedness. All of us on the Vespers leadership team invite you to return again next Thursday and the next day after that, keeping Thursdays in the late afternoon as a time for quiet and contemplation. You are encouraged as well to carry this energy into the remainder of your evenings, taking time to journal or make art and music, to avoid screens, to speak with others more softly, to move more gently across the earth. 
as we end our gathering, I invite you to take your hands off the keyboard, wherever they might be resting, maybe put them on your heart. And remember that you are a part of a wonderful web of first parishioners. Our closing words come from local Black UU minister, Reverend Daniel Gregor. Spirit of love, help us never to forget. We are your voice, hands, eyes, ears, and heart upon this one precious earth. Help us to live in peace together and to serve one another and to see the holy light in everyone. Even when those holy lights are especially hard to see. Help us to accept difference and even delight in it the way that you do. Most of all, no matter how things go, help us to be compassionate during these and other challenging times. With that, we end with some music and please feel free to log off anytime. Good night, peace be with you and amen. Oh, uh -huh.